Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Here about a year or so ago, I got to go to eastern Oklahoma and, and hunt and film Cody King running bobcats, him and Derek er Edwards. And while I was over there, uh, I had to drive back through western Oklahoma to get back home. And we had lined up an interview with Hootie Shaw. Hootie Shaw is an, an, an old-time uh, hound trainer, bobcat hunter, been, in, been doing it as long as anybody and uh, i'd always heard about him but i didn't know if, if he was still around uh guys told me that you know he was pretty magical with training hounds so i got to go back and and i think it was his nephew or maybe his grandson that set it up and uh, i got to sit down and talk to him we talked for almost two hours uh, a lot of good knowledge here also don't forget our sponsors onyx maps if uh I use Onyx Max extensively on my little journeys I go on, and uh, if you use the the uh, the code, is it B100? I think it's B100. Anyway, it'll be in the in the description down below. And then Old South Dog Boxes. They're building me a dog box right now for my Can-Am. So, anyway, I hope you enjoy the interview. I'll put the link to the film of uh, me hunting with Cody and Derek at the end of this video or in the description down below. Thanks for coming by. I hope you enjoy it. Onward and upward, man. We are in, what would you call this, west, western Oklahoma? Southwest. Southwest Oklahoma? Yeah. By Blair? Yeah, uh, biggest towns out this in Elk City out here. And I came by to talk to Mr. Hootie Shaw, uh, cat hunter from for a long time. And his nephew, Greg Shaw. So, how long have you been running cats? Oh, my dad was a hunter. And I started following him in 50, 1950. Wow. There was a man, I never did know his name. All, everybody knew him as Donkey Long. And he was on Red River south of here where he was raised. And he moved a mile east of our farm here and a mile north. And he had two dogs, uh, Rip and Rowdy. I remember their names. They were two running walkers. And Daddy, we coon hunted a lot, and Dad got to hunting with him. Bobcat, his dogs run nothing but bobcats. And uh, we, they called the cats about every time they went. There were a lot of cats in the 50s. And... We couldn't catch them. We'd go without him, and we did follow him around. But Daddy had blue ticks, and they were outstanding coon dogs, but we never did trip a cat or catch one. And then I was about in the second or probably the third grade, second grade, I think, and I traded a set of turkey eggs to a man named Clifford Warren for a puppy. He was half July and half black and tan. And uh, that was the first cat dog we ever had. He was just a baby, and I've raised him. And he got about eight or nine months old, and Dad went taking him cat hunting, and he went to catching bobcats. And uh, then a neighbor of ours had a litter mate to him that he had got from Clifford, old Redhead. And uh, Dad went and traded or bought him or ended up with him. And uh, we caught cats from then till now. Um, and that was a half black, half black and tan, half, half July. Yeah, they were half July and half black and tan. Did it? Did those cats tree? Or you no, very them? seldom do they tree. Uh, you know, some will tree, but majority of the cats here, you catch them on the ground. They will just run till they can't run no more. And uh, and you it seemed like they're treeing more than they used to for some reason. About fifty fifty is what right what, now. Uh, but but a lot of them will run run to you can catch them on the ground. You know, I mean, it. You know. Did you it, your dogs? Did they all originate from that from those dogs back then? Well, the ones now didn't. Yeah. But the ones back then, uh, a lot of people would had the hounds back then. A lot of them, and uh, I call them game getters. They were little old pencil tail. Black and tans, and then people in the river had, in the river bottoms had them up and down the river, and they were good, coon, but they were game getters. They wasn't blue tip. They were just little uh, medium eared, black and tan colored uh, 
but they were good dogs. They'd run like a running dog, and they'd tree like a tree dog. None of them's left now, but in the in the forties and the fifties and and even the sixties, I guess they started disappearing. But uh, but they were they were good dogs. They were good dogs, and most of them, I'm sure, had some some running dog in them the way they run a track and what have Did did your daddy? Did he? What did he, did he eventually move to the running walkers or? Well, he pretty well kept the dogs like he had. Uh, back then, if you had two or three good dogs, was, you kept them for years, you know. They mm-hmm. didn't trade or nothing. And uh, But, Dad, he never did uh, He never did sell a dog. And not, like I say, neighbors and friends would breed to his dogs, and they'd always bring him a puppy. And uh, he'd always tell them, no, I don't want him, but he'd normally keep them and some of them would make good dogs but that's pretty well where he got his uh, his dogs but uh do you do you did you keep the same bloodlines or well i did up until uh, about the 90s and then i never did know another cat hunter mm-hmm. you know we never hunted i mean in in the late in the 80s i guess I'm, i started meeting other cat hunters from around and uh most of them were cat hunters, but they didn't catch very. But they got to where every time it rained, they'd show up from, you know, from up towards Kansas and well, all over Oklahoma and Texas. They'd come up here and hunt with me when it rained, and uh, then. Uh, but I didn't know there was any more cat hunters for my whole life, and there wasn't anybody hunt with me or Dad because. Back then, uh, you go to the river and you park your pickup and you get out and you take off. Yeah. And my dad's liable to walk uh, up that river for several miles. And then when you come back, and it didn't make any difference. I've seen that river up chest deep and floating icebergs big as uh, tubs. And uh, he said if you walk back on the same side, you've already hunted it. He had to cross the river. <laughs> and uh, they wasn't nobody. They they just wasn't nobody hunt with us. That's just the way it was, you know. They yeah, would strip all his clothes off, carry them across the river, and put them back on, start down another side when it was thirty five, thirty six degrees, you know. <laughs> yeah, people yeah, ain't gonna do that. <laughs> no, they didn't really care about it. But I was a lot. My dad, he did, he didn't care for it. He just loved to be out in the woods. Sure. You know, he just. And I was the same way. I remember I used to take my hounds and it'd be a dry, windy old day. You wasn't going to run nothing. But I'd go spend all day if I didn't have nothing to do in the river bottom, just laying around with a bunch of dogs, you know. Yeah. A bunch of hounds. What, how'd your daddy, how'd he make a living? Did it, was he it, farmed. He farmed. He done most of his hunting in the wintertime and, and all of his hunting, uh, you might say, at night hunting was in, you know, it was mostly night hunting, except, uh, but, and he would never go unless it rained. If the conditions wasn't right, he was working. Okay. But if, if conditions, he went every time, it, if the conditions was good, well, he'd go. Of course, the rain is always too wet to, to farm anyway. Sure. And he hunted the year round. So the, the it's like uh, all the, the Cody's. Mentor uh, Reuben Lossman said, "said it, if your dogs have mud between their toes, that's the best time to to run right, cats. Right. That's the only time you can run them here. Really, only time. If it's not wet here, they can't smell nothing. It's always been that way. But, uh, but you can see one right in front of you. A dogs have seen them. I've been roading my dogs several times in my lifetime, and they'd look up and a cat cross the road in front of them, or they'd see when they'd run up there, and I'm talking about cold-nosed good dogs, and they'd just smell around. Never would even flag. They'd just smell around and go right on up the road. You wouldn't think it can be that dry, but it can here. I don't know about other places, because I never did hunt anywhere else. Yeah. And another deal here is we'll go through one of them big droughts, and. uh I don't remember that that drought in thirteen or whatever. It come that great big snow and uh it about twelve inches of snow on the ground. We went down here to Frederick and Gator and some of them cold nosed dogs. Remember we jumped a, a cat at the uh all uh fifteenth street and that cat come by us 
big old Tom bogging down in snow up to his chest, and Gator could barely open on him. And really? He was as cold nose as a, as a bloodhound. I mean, wow. That's it. And it was both one of dry, powdery snows that yeah. you could nearly, you could sweep it up and burn it nearly. You know, there was a lot of it. But that that's when it gets real frustrating, when you wait on moisture, it hits, and you go out there and they still can't do nothing. And Hootie's, we see that more and more, it seems like. And it, well, for years and years, I've told people, the more I cat hunted, the less I know about hunting conditions. Yeah. You know, I mean... Whatever, you, and I've heard everything under the sun that can be said about it, and I think all of it's correct some days. At some point. What they say happened may be right today, but tomorrow it might not. But, uh, you know, I remember them saying, well, if you, they used to burn a, uh, years ago, they'd light a fire, burn their trash out the farm. If it went straight up, all oh, them dogs could run. If it laid on the ground, they could run. Well, that's probably true some days, but tomorrow it might not be. I, not I a perfect indication. The best thing to find out if they can run a bobcat is to take your dogs out and, and jump right. on and see what they can do. That's cool, huh? But you can't, uh, yeah, I don't know. But I think condition, I'm like, has changed considerably, too, for some reason. I don't know whether it's climate. I don't know what it is. But it seemed like growing up when I was a kid and even after up till a few years ago, if it rained, they could catch bobcats. Mm-hmm. But I've seen some pretty good rains, and they couldn't even smell one, couldn't even trail one. And you might see the cat; they might see him. But I don't understand that, you know. Yeah. What? And but now one thing back for up until recent years, I'd never heard of rodent dogs. I mean, that was a new deal to me in the nineties. I met some guys, and they won't know about rodent. I never heard of rodent. But I found out right quick when you fix flats all day and go hunting, it's a lot better than <laughs> shoe leather express up that river. Uh, it's a lot better deal setting that pickup and watch your dog <laughs> trot along in front of you. I like that. It's a, lot, it's a lot better when you're in your 60s, too. That's yeah. when I started doing it, when he couldn't yeah. walk no more. Oh, yeah. If I could still get around, I'd be in that river bottom a lot of days with my hounds. I still would, but. But y'all hunted a lot mule back, too. Yeah, we hunted a lot on mules after. But one they had fence one, jumping mules go up and down these rivers. Kate yeah, and Katie. Yeah, yeah. After dad, he, dad got so old he couldn't walk too good, and we got to hunting on mules and and what have you. But mules at night. Yeah, a lot. yeah. We hunted at night a lot. Do most of your hunting on the river? Done it all on the river. All on the river. Yeah, I didn't even know there was was any cats in in that shinry across the road from our house, but. Uh, but we hunted the rivers. And you can't hunt the mountains here. They're too rough. I mean, you never, they'll go in them holes in them mountains. And these granite rocks here are bigger than a house, you know. Mm-hmm. You can't. Yeah, there, there's cats all over them, but, but, uh, they'll just, they'll just hole up. You know, they won't even run. They'll just jump in a crevice. And then, uh, there's country west of us too. There's jip hills and there's, uh, jip sinks is what we call them. But they're just giant gypsum caverns under the water. And those cats won't run a lick. Or I mean, under the under the ground, not under the water. But they, they you'll jump them. They'll just run it, it in that cat. It looks like monster honeycomb. Yeah. You know, if you could just build up a, a, a bee's honeycomb, a thousands of times, that's what a they look they places look like. Yeah, I I seen those mountains coming in here. It looked a lot different. It looks more like home to me than yeah. than where I was. You know, the last few days. That looks like look like you might get a mountain lion in here from time to time. Yeah, and we we we've never had them. You know, there was some in there, and they they killed them out in the early 1900s, and and they're starting to show back up. Uh, I was gonna say the uh, we I took Hootie up here the other day, and and uh, we looked at the first track me and him's ever seen. Not the first one I've ever seen. And, uh, but the lion had been seen. <clears throat> in fact, he was killed right south here the next day or two. But I think he was probably brought in here with his young line. I don't know if he... Oh, he might have But been I've hunted here ever since I was six years old, and I'm 81 years old, and I ain't never seen a lion track. You know, and yeah. I track constantly, uh, you know, when you're roading yeah. especially. Well, in the red, it doesn't matter where I was at. I was looking... Uh, even today, if I'm on an old country road somewhere, I'm looking for a bobcat track. That's <laughs> just the way it is. But... Uh, but I track constantly and what 
you said you used to have good coon hounds and everything. What drew you to cat hunting over running coons? Well, I don't know. I guess it's just a challenge because, uh, like I said, Dad had them blue ticks in the 50s, and, and uh, you know, he got to hunting with Mr. Long, and they was catching them old big bobcats, and it was just a, it's just a different. Totally different. Deal. Yeah, but it's a challenge. You know that. Yeah. yeah. There's, I'm going to say that out of all the hunters I've known through the years that were actually – and I'm sure there's a lot of them in South Texas from what I hear. But in this part of the country, I've known about five in 81 years that were sure enough cat hunters. Yeah, yeah. Five or six, there's not very many. And where did you where did you get your first I, – I imagine you ended up with running walkers, from what I understand. Uh, where did you get your first running walkers? Well – Ah, uh, but years ago, I got one of uh, Crow Christian's dogs, and uh, I don't know, that's probably in the early 80s, maybe. But we had run, part running dogs. They were crossbred dogs, but they were cat dogs. I mean, they, were, they went back to them old uh, uh, pencil tail. Those meat dogs or, or yeah, game getters. Game getters, they called them. They went back to them on the river. A lot of people here on the river had them, and uh, uh, but up till then. But I got a, I got my first one from Crow Christian in the eighties, I guess. And uh, I don't know, he was awful good. I hit one, of, well, both of them. I got a pair from him. Which dog was that? Ranger. He Ranger. got poisoned when he was. He wasn't, but about he wasn't two years old. But he was the best cat dog I ever owned to this day. Just this day, and trail, he, jump, strike, trail, he jump. He wouldn't open a lot on the cold track, but I had some real good dogs, and I'd put them out on the track. And uh, if he didn't come back to the truck, load your old dogs and sit there, and you'd hear him somewhere. He may be a half mile. He'd hear him running, mm-hmm. and he he jumped several cats. He just went to done. Another thing I really liked is uh, if I seen a cat, and went to calling him, he'd bark every breath coming to me. Oh, yeah. He'd bark every breath right by the side of the truck. Or if I was running, he'd run right with me. And when it went off the road, and I'd, he'd, whenever I'd point him, you know, he'd shut up till he got the track and he'd leave with it. He he did all that on his own. Yeah. He was okay. really. Did he, you did you raise a lot of pups out of him? No. He got, he, uh, he, uh, he got in wolf poison. Yeah. Killed him when he was about. 20 months, 18, 20 months old. Bobby Day. What was the next running dog at that old, was it Maud? Or what, what was that old, uh, Hudge? Yeah, uh, well, that Hudge was way before him. We raised some pups out of old Hudge. He was a, uh, he was come from Arkansas, and he was a, I forgot what they called that line, of blood line of uh, running walkers. You want to you see if you can help him get that on top of his head further so it'll be more comfortable. He look, look uncut. There you go. Yeah, yeah old Hudge was one of the first uh, full blood running dogs we had, and he was a real good dog. The only thing is, uh, whenever you went hunting, when you caught the cat, if you didn't get a lead on him, you wasn't going to take him to the house. He was not. He'd go find him and he'd go start hunting. Again. Go hunting again, and and he wouldn't he wouldn't hunt with you. Uh, he just hunt. He'd he 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 didn't care. He go if he had to go ten miles. He'd go jump a bobcat if he had to go ten miles. But he'd always go to the closest farmhouse and lay down on their porch. And they'd call us and we'd go get him. Bobby. But he was a uh, that's for shot collars. What no? Oh no yeah. How, when'd you get your first uh, shot collars or, or shot collars or tracking collars? Well, I just got tracking collars recently. Uh, after I got the early two thousands, when when we started hunting with Finney, he got us the old telemetric system. Oh yeah, I had some of them old beep beep that you held yeah. antenna yeah. on. But these last ones, uh, uh, two thousand ten. Yeah, probably. Brian brought me. Brian bought me ten. I was training dogs for him, and then Brett brought me eight. I had eighteen. Yeah, um, and and had a screen on the TV. I mean, on the counter, on their 
on your dash, and you could yep. see where your dogs was, what they were doing, and everything. It was. A, you like that? Oh Lord, <laughs> gosh! Man, it's come a long way since, uh, you know, back when me and Daddy was, and we never would. St- if I started two young dogs, uh, when they got old enough to get independent, they'd have one wolf race. Or well, there wasn't no deer here then. The deer didn't get here till later years, but. I'd have one coat race, and Dad said, all right, pick out the one you want. We ain't going to train two puppies. You're going to keep one. Yeah. He never start with one at a time. Yeah. So I had to get rid of several good young dogs because I couldn't hunt if I, he just wouldn't allow you to hunt. But when we'd break one at a time, you know. Yeah. But uh, Did you ever run coyotes? With all? greyhounds. Oh, with greyhounds. And I had my greyhounds trained to a spotlight. Yep. I worked all the time in daytime, and I had some real good night dogs. And I'd, a lot of, I'd always catch around 100 a year oh, wow. coyotes with greyhounds at night. Spot yeah. night. But there's not many coyotes here now. they got the mains in the last, and I hadn't hunted since the late 70s. Probably. Well, they outlawed, they outlawed spotlight them. Yeah, they in, got in the 77, wasn't it? I think, but they got them deer in here, and that's... Then, Why they made them? Oh, that messed everything up. Yeah. But back in we hunted, you know, it was real hard to break dogs off a of deer mm-hmm. because you might not see but one or two a year. They wasn't, and you know, and it's hard to break dogs when you see one in July and the next one in January. Yeah. But that's the way it was back then. You just, uh, you know, and them old dogs back then, if they run a deer, you might not see them again. Somebody would call you in a week or four or five days. They wouldn't. Them dogs back then didn't just run them over the hill and come back. They'd, they'd hit one of these rivers and no telling where they'd end up. Did you, I'm back before the shot collar, did you have a hard time breaking your cat dogs off of well, coyotes? Or, or did you... Well, Daddy, uh, no, he, of course, like I said, you had to whip them, and they'd learn to go around you. They'd, you know, they'd learn. But that's the reason you just started one dog, mm-hmm. you know, one at a time. But I never will forget a guy hunted with us, and he had a jip that was two, three years old. And she kept running coyotes. And every time he'd go off somewhere hunting, he'd have to leave her. She'd jump a coyote and leave what he, she happened to hear. He come back and looked for her two or three days and couldn't find her. But Daddy had hunted with him a lot and knew she was a real good dog. Oh, Rachel, you probably remember her. I don't know if you do. Anyway, he lost her. And a few days later, a guy called and this old guy come and got her. Not a little boy, but I rode with Daddy to get her. We started home with her and he was a customer. Uh, old Dennis Ray was a customer for running coyotes. And Dad said, well, what do you take for? He told her, and Daddy just pulled over right then and paid him. And I didn't know my dad ever bought a dog anyway. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, a few days later, we went hunting, and Dad told me, he said, uh, he just want to walk down to this thicket. And, and he said, whenever you see me wave my cap, he said, you walk the dogs out there. So I did. They didn't even get there hardly until she jumped the coat. And I heard Daddy catch her. He was way down there. And... I heard him whipping her, and I walked out, and he said, well, oh, when I got there, he was still whipping her. <laughs> and so I got there, and he turned her loose. And uh, after that, we was talking one day, and he said, you know, the only trouble I have with old Rachel now, he said, if they jump off game, said, I can't keep her out of the bib of my overall. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, Dennis Ray, uh, how come he couldn't break her, Daddy? I said, he had had her for two years or something, and said he never had to break her. And he said, well... Dennis Ray was spanking her, and when a dog two years old, uh, still doing it, said, you need to quit spanking them and give them a whipping. <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> he said, there's a difference. But he said the only problem he had with her was keeping her out of the bed with his overalls. You might move a little bit closer. I'm worried that I'm blocking you where you are. It ain't no big deal. I just, if you talk, I want, I want him to see you talk. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad, he was a, he was a, quite a cat hunter. He, he caught a lot of bobcats. Bobby. And and so eventually you, you moved all to running walkers. Yeah. Yeah, these dogs, uh, well, there's a picture there on the front of that. Well, every dog in them books, I, I like I said, the first six, I believe first six years, I kept them kind of percentage of what was good dogs and what wasn't. And uh, I know I started, uh, I raised and started the first six years 128. 
Wow. And Finney Clay ended up with most of them. And I didn't even know the people he let have them. But, uh, but he was paying me to train them, you know. I just, but I enjoyed training. Sure. I'd a lot rather train a puppy as catch a bobcat. I mean, I love to train young dogs. Yeah, yeah. Especially after I got all this new technology. It was uh, so much easier. Well, I couldn't have done it with, you know, with just now tonic wouldn't have worked. And you couldn't, you know, you couldn't do. And you never had to, back in those days, you never had to travel. To, to no, I just hunted around here, but we had a severe drought in eleven in uh, two thousand and ten. It rained every day in just about in July, August, September, and uh, the boy hunted with me in July, June, July, August, September. Yeah, in four months we caught sixty something cats. Wow! And uh, now some of these cats. We probably, if they treat one a sour or young, we didn't kick them out. And I'm sure some of them, we may have treated them a second time. But we we looked at 62, and a lot of them they killed on the ground. But it quit raining in October of 2010. It didn't rain again in 2015. Wow. And that's when I quit. I said, I ain't training no more dogs. Well, Clyde just, you know, and then I called it. That a guy in Greenville, South Carolina, and told him I'd take his dogs, and uh, so I kept. But and then Brett called me from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and I trained some dogs. And he bought me a he bought he bought me or he bought me a trailer, mm-hmm. real nice trailer, and and everything, and moved it to. He uh, broken bow down that area where you yeah, got that's where we were yesterday. Yeah, the last couple of days. And then uh, I stayed there for uh, I guess all through the drought. Ten years. Yeah, I, I was there about ten years. And uh, then later we was there. I was there on that mountain. I think three years. And then he bought some acreage down, down down there, and and I uh, we had a, a acreage. Set up and, but I stayed down there for dogs and done all the hunting. Is that were you retired by then or? No, oh yeah, yeah, I was retired. Uh, I had a health problem and give that boy this shop in '04. And how old were you then? Uh, well, I was down forty-two. Well, it'd been it's been, been eighteen years ago. You'd been your sixties. 64 or something. I still got around pretty good in what 80. Yeah. Man, well, I did up to, but I had, uh, when I had my problems, I had staph infection in my heart. Wow. And didn't dream I'd live. Yeah. They, I was in the hospital. I was in intensive care 11 days, and I was in the hospital uh, 30 days, and then for six weeks after I got out, they left the port. And they gave me 250 cc's of antibiotics every morning for 45 days. Wow. And uh, I, I didn't think I'd ever do anything again. In fact, I quit in February. I called Greg and told him, I said, Greg, I'm getting rid of these dogs. I said, I can't even pick up a bucket to feed it. I lost 65 pounds. I knew I was dying. They didn't know what was the matter with me. They couldn't find out. Couldn't find out. And then I told him, I said, you going to, he said, oh, don't get rid of them. I'll take care of them. And it rained every day. And I was in the hospital and him and my nephew come up there every day with pictures. <laughs> and I wasn't interested. I was dying. I tried to live. You remember bringing me all these pictures? He'd say, and I had a bunch of good dogs in. He'd say, I'd take the males one day and said, I'd take the females the next day. And he said, I've been trying to figure out what pack was the best dogs. One of the males, and he said, you know, I've decided whichever. He said, I'll take the males and catch a couple of cats, and the next day take the female. And said, I've decided whichever pack you got with you is the best. <laughs> but I had a bunch of young, good dogs, wasn't he? Yeah, we had a pile back then, sure. Did, did, so after you were sick, you, so you went to hunting after you got better? Oh, yeah. And and that was when you were in your 60s? Yeah. Yeah. Did it change? Could it? After being sick like that, did it kind of change your your view on things? Or? No, not really. I just I just hunted. Just picked up where you left off. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh. That's about the time Finney would have come along, about 03, 04. That's what he's saying, the first other cat hunter he really met. And then that's what we went, since then went really straight to Finney Clay's bloodline, you know. It went, well, he quit. He quit a little about in the 90s and got rid of all his dogs. And then when we went and started back up, you couldn't find the type of dogs we needed. You know, you needed running dogs. There just wasn't any around. These competition. Well, I, I, I got that uh, Joe Mahalik. You know Joe Mahalik? No, sir. He's in South Texas. I got a bitch from him, 21, they called her. Her name was Sally on registration papers. But, uh, but, but she, that, went, she went back to the same stuff Finney's did, right? Right. But 21 and Buster. 21 and Buster's where every dog in there come from. Really? Yes. I yeah. bought Buster and old Joe Mahalik come out here and hunted with me. And we caught a cat that night. But they were running that cat. And we had five or six good dogs out there. And I had to make a lose. And this little squalling bitch would grab it and just kept on. And I said, uh, what dog is that? It wasn't one of mine. I said, what dog? He said, that's old 21. He said, uh, but he said, I'm going to kill her or leave her here. I said, uh, if you can get a chance when they come in, shoot her. And I said, he said, you can't take her home with you. She will not load this pickup. And I said, well, I ain't got, she's a cat running demon. He said, I don't care. I said, you can't hunt her because she won't come in ever. Yeah. So they run that cat in a hole in the ground. I went down there and took a piece of barbed wire and twisted him out. And I got back to the truck. And she was with me right there at the tailgate. When I crawled through the fence, I petted her. When I got the truck, she wasn't there. And he told me, he said, well, I'm leaving her here. He said, I ain't taking her home with me. He said, I've been going to kill her every time. I said, well, don't kill her. I so anyway, uh, I, a neighbor, one of the guys called me three or four days later. And I went and picked her up. And uh, you couldn't hunt her, but I guarantee you, I believe you could have bred her to a Crew tail bulldog. She was had a producer. She would have produced some puppies. But I, I, and then after all these puppies turned out so good, that's when Finney Clay decided he wanted to register them, which she was registered and old Buster was registered. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went to registering them all, and everything went back to them two dogs. So and, did you, you and Finney traded dogs back and forth? Or well, yours? they were his. They were you his. might say all the time. I didn't care. Yeah, you know he paid me to, to train them and what have you, and just one of them deals. I just hunted, and he bought a little feed and a gas and what have you, and then, um, and whenever I got a litter, you know, after I got them trained, I threw with them. Mm -hmm. You know, he come get them. There was some old guy in East Texas he gave them to, and uh, then he he gave some. To, I can't remember that guy's name. And then the Rybards got several of them, and. Just first one and another, and uh, they were just you might say our dogs. I bred yeah. them and raised them and everything, trained them, and uh, and you know we never did for it because if any had a dog, is mine. If I had one, is his. If he said I'd like to have that dog, I'd let him. If I said that, he'd let me have it. We just yeah. kind of didn't know really trade. We just had p plenty of cat dogs, and uh, like I said, then. Uh, after he died, my carrier was just going to get them all, but that didn't work very good. He he didn't get the first base. Yeah. Uh, and the pot liquors just, they just wouldn't work. They just weren't found. Well, I tell people, this is my opinion. Okay. If you're going to race horses, what in the hell would you want with Shetland? <laughs> yeah. And that's what you're doing. You're taking, especially that country where you come from, uh huh. Uh, you can't do much with. And when you say in the country I came from, that's where you been we were hunting over there right. by Broken Bow. Right. Yeah. Right. But now these boys in South Texas, uh, the ones that come up here and hunt with me couldn't do it. They just never did catch a cat. But I tell people, if I hunted in South Texas, I guarantee you I'd have the same dogs them, do them guys have. Really? Because you don't catch that many cats without good dogs. No. And what's a good dog here, and what's a good dog in South Texas, and what's a good dog in Broken Bow, or you just well be running different animals. Do you, do you can you identify what the difference differences are, the traits that's needed in different areas, or well, is it just kind of something they evolved to? I don't know. 
I, I can't do that. Yeah. Well, I do know you can't catch. You, uh, I do know back there. I don't think you can catch cats with uh, with pot liquors. Yeah, you just can't do it. Yeah, and you don't catch very many with running dogs. Although you caught two, and I'm gonna say that you got a way. Probably a way better dogs than I ever had all the years out. Uh, they're not my dogs. I was just I I went there to keep that South Texan honest. <laughs> he said he was going to go on. I said, well, I'm not bringing because I got lion I, lion dogs. I mean, I got yeah. cold nose, dry ground yeah. lion hounds. And I said, I'm not bringing a dog because mine will look foolish back there. And uh, he wanted to prove that he could catch cats back there. And I who said, is well, this? His name's Cody King. And oh yeah, is that some of his dogs you got? Yes, sir. Well, he dang sure got some good ones. I'll say that. Yeah, and uh, I said I'm going to go film it, and I'm going to keep you honest. And we're going to, you know, if you tree a possum, I'm going to, I'm going to film it. A funny thing, there was two guys, oh, they lived down here on Red River, uh, by Elmer, I knew them, but Bill Rice Singer and, I can't remember the other guy's name, but they, they wore out a, a jet airplane frying dogs back and forth <laughs> from Idaho and back in that country, and Old Bill said we called a guy. They sold a farm. They was in partners farming. When they sold a farm back then, in the 80s, I guess, and said we spent every bit of it on dogs. and never did catch a bobcat. <laughs> but he was ordering them dogs from out of that full cry magazine, from, oh, okay. you know, back north. And said we called an old guy from, uh, I think he said Idaho. And that guy had some dogs, and they were good ones, and he'd sell us one, and you know, and he said, where do I ship him to? And they said, well, need to ship him to Dallas, Texas. And he said, well, where you guys live? And uh, he said, do you know where Elmer, Oklahoma is? And that guy said, no, but I know where Vernon is. And they said, well, Vernon's about 20, uh, 15, 20 miles south of us. He said, you don't want none of my dogs. And he said, why? He said, you just don't want them. He said, I had a pack of dogs few years ago said I sold dogs for years and there was a guy in North Texas uh, close to Red River got to buy and, uh, some of my dogs said he sent every one of them back and he said it really made me mad because I knew these dogs didn't hardly miss a cat in Idaho and he said I loaded the best pack of hounds I ever owned in my life and I drove from here all the way to Vernon, Texas and I hunted with that guy on Red River and said we jumped two or three cats nearly every day and said we never did even scare one and he said, I loaded my dogs and brought them back to Idaho and said, I ain't seen you none of my dogs because I guarantee you they won't see you. ain't going to work. Know. ain't going to work. So I don't know. Like I say, it's a... Uh, it, but it takes different dogs. And then cats are different, too. I mean, them cats down there, of course, them, they can't run a cat down there. They just got to follow him around in them briars when yeah, they get that tough, big. Yeah. And I can't hardly... How, when you were hunting, how many dogs did you like to hunt at a time? We uh, down there, I, back here. Uh, Dad never did have but five, and most of the time he kept four. Mm-hmm. Uh, back here, I never did have uh, over four or five dogs. But now uh, down there, uh, of course, like I said, I was training dogs for all them guys, and they were their dogs most of them. Of course, they, like I said, if I said I needed this one or wanted that, they were all. Everybody there, they were my dogs, if, if I wanted one or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, but back there, you couldn't have too many. Like I said, I had 28 cat dogs and run one six hours and caught him, and I don't know then. But the last three hours, they run him in a, uh, probably a square block and come by within 10 feet of me on that road. I don't know how many times, and I yep. never did see a dog or a cat. That's how bad it was. That's exactly. I mean, we could watch on that screen. That one uh, Cody has a screen, not the little bitty tracker screen, but it's a it's a big one. It's 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 like that, and you could watch that, you know, just right. park screwing. And, and and he'd say, "Well, that cat's squatting in there. That cat, they're trying yeah. to find you." And then they'd pop him up, and then they'd go somewhere else, and then they'd do another little cork. And like you said, those dogs and that cat came within fifteen foot of the side of the road there, you can't see him. and couldn't see any of them. Anything, you know, and then it go and and uh, I was amazed. I, I, you know, Cody said they caught him, and I couldn't. I, I had a hard time telling the difference. Of course, we had twenty two dogs out there, right. and uh, 
it, it was a education for me, for sure. I was. It's I different. Never, it's different. Like I said, you I always t- told people if you jump a cat here, conditions is right, and you didn't catch him. The only reason you didn't have cat dogs. Yeah. But, I mean, they can get away from you. Over there. It's just. Uh, yeah, you know, but you know, I gave a guy Curtis Nelson down there, and he caught a lot of cats. But I, I but he hunted back uh, west of there. Okay, you know Curtis. Yeah, he hunted there around Atoka. Yeah, and he would catch a lot of cats, and that's that's pretty rough country. But but and they, they go over there, you know. I mean, several get away. But but Brett said he he run a good tree dog there one time and said. A few more of them cats was treeing and what he thought. Said so she'd locate out there, but he he quit hunting her because he didn't want to have to go out there to him. Well, I done the same thing. When I went to James Collins, which is he, uh, north of there, 100 miles. That's the first place I hunted back in. And it was a terrible. Move. You know, you just couldn't hardly. It was just like there. I mean, you just couldn't hardly catch them cats and hounds. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but we we caught quite a few there. Well, we caught a lot there over. But I hunted there for I don't know twelve years maybe or something. Yeah. It, during the years, was it ever worth you know pulling the hides on them? And, and well, in the seventies, uh, well, yeah, we sold the hides back then. It was worth quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a game warden. He just died. Leslie Webb just died. Died a few months ago. He's eighty. He's same age as me, but he was a game warden. One time, me and Dad was hunting, and and we run into him. He was off that day. He said, uh, "I know where there's a uh, big bobcat." Said I can't call him in. Hides in was bringing one hundred fifty dollars, and he was money boy. I mean, bro. Anyway, he said, "If you give me the hide off," and so of course Dad said, "Well, you can have the hide." Well, we go down there, and as soon as we get there, they go to running. Well, directly, Dad told him, said, they got him treed, and he just bouncing around there. And, of course, he was out of uniform, and then he said, have you got a gun? Dad said, yeah, he handed him an old twenty two out of his pocket. Well, he left her, and I remember Dad hollered and telling him, said, don't put your eye out in that brush. He said, they'll have that cat, and you get there. We was walking along. Directly, I looked up, and here he come back as hard as he went. And I, what in the world is he coming back for? He run up to Dad and said, Leonard, have you got any shells? <laughs> and Dad had him a box of shells. And he said, why didn't you give me them to start with? And Dad said, well, you didn't ask for any shells. You just asked for the gun. <laughs> but we teased him about that uh, all his years. But old, old Wes, in fact, he hunted with me a lot up till two years ago. when I, He'd ride with me a lot, you know. Yeah. I still training folks. But, uh, Tell me the story about the the big Bobcat, that 42-pounder. Well, we was down by El Dorado, me and Marion Graham, and, and uh, they struck and cold trailed out there. It just made a horseshoe circle and crossed the road again in front of us, the creek, and they cold trailed, and everything shut up. And I had a little black and tan pup is about, I don't know, nine or ten months old, and everything shut up. And come, we loaded him in the pickup, and he had went on around and crossed the bridge in front of us, and he opened a time or two. So I pulled up there and, and kept what listening. What dog was that? And uh, I don't remember. Uh, you might move your mic closer to your mouth. Uh, Rock. Uh, there you go. There you go. That's good. We called him Rock. I think he's a black and tan. Marion Graham got him, and he got run over right after he got him. He was still young. Anyway, he opened a time or two, and... I turned the rest of the dogs out, and they got out there, and they just went to running wide open. And from one corner of the section, they just went far, straight across, just like a bunch of wolf dogs, right straight across to the far corner and treed. Well, we go around there, and they treed right over the fence, and I crawled over the fence and punched him out, and they run him a minute and treed him again. And uh, I punched him out the second time. I told Marin, I said, you know, every time they treed that cat, I believe he's getting bigger. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we uh, kicked him out, I think, the third time. They caught him right on the fence. Of course, they was chewing around on him. Whatever. And I throwed him over the fence, and uh, we got back to pick up and fix him to leave. And Marin was going to throw him back over in the pasture. And he he said, I'm going to take this cat in and weigh him. He said, this cat will weigh 40 pounds. 
I said, Marion, in my lifetime, I've took a pickup load of 40 pounders to the house, and every one of them will weigh 30, 31, 32. <laughs> he said, no, I believe his cat's heavier than that. And I said, well, he's not. So he said, well, I'm going to weigh him anyway. So we come on to the house, and, and I stopped and weighed him on my bathroom scales, and he weighed 42 pounds. And then I had a nephew, not Greg, another nephew, that I called him. He tanned hides and messed with him. He was a, a state trapper, predator control boy, too, like him. He came over and got him. He called me that night and told me, he said, uh, he said, I weighed this cat that I got two wildlife scales and said he weighs 42 pounds. And then he called me back a little bit and he said, but I'll tell you one thing. He said, when I skid him, he said he was, he had a lot of beef in him. He'd, he'd, he was a big, he, I knew he was as big as I ever called. Had he been eating on a dead somewhere? Or? Dead cow. Probably. Yeah. Bull. There was a bull there. Okay. The guy that owned that place later told me that he had a big bull there by that bridge that was dead. I'll be. But, uh, Biggest one you caught for that was 35, wasn't it? Yeah. Like that one at Raiden. Yeah. He was an odd made cat, though. He was, he had the biggest head. I believe I could reach around his flanks. He's skinny, like yeah, a, Well, yeah, but he weighed thirty five. He was a he was a big son of a gun. Was he? Was he? Did he run hard? Well, I don't know. It was real windy. Sorry, and I had old old, old Ranger was about sixteen months. He's just a young dog, and uh, I lost him, and I couldn't find him. And I went to town and eat dinner and went back, and I still couldn't find him. And there's a guy on a the horse there training bird dogs. And uh, he come out there every year from uh, Missouri or somewhere and trained bird dogs for lawyers and doctors. Anyway, he said, you lose a dog? And I said, yeah. And he said, he's down there in that plum thicket tree. Well, I go down there and I can hear him bade. And I went out there and he had this old bit. I turned the rest of the dogs out. And they had this old bit. And you know, I never took a picture of him or nothing. I've always wished I had of because he was a freak made cat. Yeah. But I did take him in and weigh him. But that's the only time I can remember having to leave a dog at the house for a month or so because that young dog still baying him, but that cat had eat his back legs up, chewed him up in his muscles of his back legs, and after he's he could get around then, but a couple of hours he couldn't walk on his back legs. That old cat had caught him and wow. eat him up, but I had to leave him at the house. Uh, uh, he was... When when you say tree, but you said earlier that your dogs didn't hardly tree. Well, he said they were treed. He he said he was treed, but he wasn't treed. He was made. Yeah. Yeah. Them running dogs we got will tree. They just don't locate very good. That's and, it. But if they see that cat go up, they you know they'll tree. You know? That's what I was or, I was hoping to well, find out. If I squall, you know, if I make the racket like I see one in the tree, mm-hmm. they'll ever one come to me and go to look in the tree, and all my dogs always do that. But it's that locate if they're out there by the I have to locate yep. most of the time, and I guess he does. I don't know. Yeah, I got. I, we did have some that tree every once in a while. This pack I got now, a skeeter. My, I had a dog he'd tree a little or locate a little bit, and now he died last year. He was nine. I just up and died one day. It's really stomach cancer or something. I think something wrong with him. But now uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't have a tree dog. But any time I've never any of them that really started locating. I've had problems with them, you know, same with him, uh, like that green tree, you know. Oh, slick tree? Yeah. But, yeah, and I don't know this. These guys, uh, you know, we've had, uh, oh, boy, up here, he hunted with us a few years ago quite a bit and got to catching some cats, and he was going to cross these running and but we had the tree most of them you know by sight with dogs in the tree and he was gonna cross these running dogs up with some bear and lion dogs and, and get them treeing better and they wasn't any of them pups worked out you know and and they didn't locate any better than the running dogs but when when you did that it would uh what i mean just slowing down too slow yeah uh nearly all of them were mouthy i remember that and they uh and that's one thing about bobcat hunting. They need to shut up when when they make a lose, and they don't need to run up 
they rub that track. They don't need to go back down it like them pot hookers do. That in a in when you now say that again. When, say like uh, you know, like those bear and lion dogs. They're you know they're bred to just trail up and down that that track. And yeah. Cold trail and with these. With these bobcat dogs or these running dogs like we run, you know, they need to take that track on. They don't even hardly ever need to go back to, to where they've already trailed. In other words, don't don't bark on don't, a covered up track. We call it rubbing the track. Rubbing and, the track. Yeah. You, you got to have coursing dogs. That. Yeah, coursing dogs. Even right. trailing. All my packs always were coarse. If they smell him here, they'd break and run and smell him here and... Right, run they coursed him. So instead it, of walking that track, yeah, they had coursed that cat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, trying to find out. It, I had an old, an older man tell me that he called it "move it forward, dogs." Right, they they right. always moving it forward. Yeah, yeah. And Daddy it, always called it coursing dogs, and you know he said them. That's another thing on short game dog, like your. You know, they go from track to track. They mm-hmm. trail it. Uh, but you ever will jump bobcat already. You need, you need, they need to course that track, you know. Even and a cold, I mean, can they course a cold track? Yes. They can. Yes, if they're good dogs, they can. I've had uh, Gator and, oh, what was his litter mate? Ranger and uh... Well, Ranger too, but uh, there were two of them real good. Gator and oh, the old dog went deaf, didn't he? Joe, Joe, yeah. They were probably the best two I ever owned at coursing the track, and they were pups, a year or something old. And I had the old beep beep trackers, mm-hmm. but two or three times I'd find that they'd smell a cat and the old dog flag a little and what have you. I'd get to get it out and I found them mile, two mile, one more, one night there's three miles and they're running that cat when I tracked them down. But I've seen them in daytime going up a fence row or something and they'd smell it and one of them would squall and the other one would come and just run by him wide open and they'd take off again and go up there, you know, 50, 100 yards and go to work and directly you'd see one of them flag and they'd squall again and take off. Uh, and they trail, they trail a cat a long ways like that. And, uh, how about and, how about taking those kind of dogs and running lions out west? I mean, do you think it's well? I've given some to John Justman, and he said that old white dog. He was wore out here, but he told me he he left his dogs several yeah. times cold trailing, and he'd find him laying under the tree. But he said several times he had a tracker on. Said I'd go to him and said he the lion be in the tree and he'd be laying down under it. Yeah, I. I'd always heard, like, Henry McIntyre down Have you heard of Henry McIntyre, lion hunter down there? Yeah. That he always had a couple running dogs in with his old cold trail. Is that Odessa? No, clear down in uh, uh, Valentine, south of Van Horn is yeah. where he was. And he, he caught a lot of lions in, in tough, you know, dry ground conditions. Yeah. But he usually always had a running dog he had, that he ran with his dogs. and And I think those dogs kind of. I don't know. The thing they always said is after the track got warmed up a little bit that they left the other dogs behind is is kind of what I always heard. Oh, they're not any good for lion hunting because there's not anybody has them. I mean, that's like in South Texas. They don't very few people. They don't want them because they want tree. Yeah. They got to have tree dogs. Or so, in the same way lion hunting, they got to have tree dogs. And like I said, if I lived down there, I wouldn't. But I wouldn't know nothing but a running dog if I was wanting to be successful at catching lions from here east. Because uh, you're just going to bay them up and you don't have yeah. tall timber. And... I don't know that you'd ever, I don't know, you just can't catch them. But I can't believe South Texas dogs, that guy's bound to have some of the best dogs around if he caught two down there in that crap. Mm-hmm. Because a dog finishes a race down there, he's a good dog. Yeah, yeah. If he, if he fights that brush long enough to catch a cat, he's a good dog. Oh yeah, it, it, and you'd be surprised how many down there. Well, not a lot, but I shot probably three or four down. The bread, good, good dogs right here. I'd take them back there and I shoot them. They wouldn't even get in the. They'd after a race or two, they'd run the road. They wouldn't. They didn't care. Be running a cat, cross one of them roads, and they'd drop out. Yeah, I just I just 
you know, you you don't need to keep them kind of dogs. I mean, yeah. if they don't have the desire, you can't make them. No, you can't, you, you can't train that desire no, into them. No, you can't train the desire in them. But, uh, but I, I did away with a few down there. Very few, but, uh, he did have a, uh, tree and walker in the 90s, Misty. She yeah. Was, she was yeah. a good dog. Yeah, she, she was. was cute, you know, some of them, I've never seen one, but he's had a few through the years that made it in these cat packs, but, uh, but, uh, a lot of them, they, they might start out good, and at three, four years old, they'll go back to their breeding, you know, and, and yeah. they, they, they'll mess the race up. Yeah. You know, they, they'll they'll like, bark behind or go back on a track that's already been run and, and start barking when they make a lose, or a, or they'll green tree, you know. Well, i tell you, she was a, what, a 70 model maybe? But the later years, they bred, it, to me, to my opinion they bred the tack, tracking ability out on your short game dogs mm-hmm. your you know you take your your blue ticks now back in the in the 50s and the 60s when i was a kid a blue tick was a little old pencil tail blue dogs and little ears about like so and uh, they were really game getters but now they look like a bloodhound Mm-hmm. They bred them their feet, you know, they've got big old feet and their ears are foot long. Most of them away, they they just flat, my opinion, they've bred the, a lot of the bloodlines. They've bred the tracking ability out. You know, you take for years, they started all these hunting clubs, and if an old dog or a bitch would stand there and bark a uh, Bark a hundred barks a minute at a tree. That's a brood bitch, or that's a stud. So dog. they just start breeding. And them. they did just exactly what they were bred to do. And uh, Com- had a competition coon hunters. What yeah. about the what about the pen raised running dogs? They're the dogs. They that they, they're not worth nothing. Nothing. No. Yeah, that's what I've always heard. No, they're not worth nothing. There were some guys tried. In fact, there were some boys give a lot of money I know of for some of them, and they never did get nowhere with them. They're uh, uh, they're just yeah. That's what I've Old Joe Mahali, that old guy, I was telling you about. He's really a good. He was telling me he he gave a hundred dollars for five of them. He said, "Boy, I stole some of the best wolf dogs in the world." Said I bought them out of this pen, and uh, he said, uh, "I'm getting them used to me. I'm fixing to take them hunting." A few days for a month or so later, I called him. I said, "Well, how did your dogs do?" He said. They done real good. He said, I took them hunting and said, I guess they jumped a wolf. Said, they took off. And he said, I guess they hadn't found a fence that'll turn them around yet. Said, they've been gone a month and I hurt them. But he said, they never did find the fence to turn them around. Oh, no, he, he was quite a guy. That thing bothering you a little bit? Well, I can't get it set back like it. Right, there you go. Just needs to go right on top. Yeah. Their pain, their yeah, Joe, he sold out and moved to South Texas, and he called me about a year ago or maybe two years ago and told me he's 80-something years old. He said, I've decided, he said, I was too old to raise any more puppies, but said, I need to get a jip from you. He said, I'm going to raise another litter of pups. And I said, Joe, there's cat hunters everywhere down there. I said, you don't want one of my jips. I said, them boys down there's got good dogs for your area. I said, you need to get one from them. And uh, he said, well, he said, I'll think about it. But anyway, he uh, he called me back later and told me that he had found one, but he didn't want no running, you know. He he needed trip. But he was he was up in the air that day. Him and another old man about his age had caught two cats that morning. Oh, yeah. So he was going to raise some. Oh, but, but Joe was a good hunter. He's... He come out here, he's one of them. Well, there was a bunch of them used to come out here ever. Every time it rained, uh, we had old Billy Smith. They're all dead now. Billy Smith and Mr. Bill Curtis, Marion Graham, Clyde Lawson. I heard Clyde just sold all his dogs. Yeah. Got out of it. Yeah, I don't know the guy he sold them to. He told me who he was. I think he lives down there somewhere, but I never heard of him. And uh, but Clyde hunted. He's Clyde hunted quite a bit. 
And he caught quite a few cats. Mm-hmm. He had a, one of the better dogs I ever raised, old Tonto. He was a good dog. You said, yeah, you said eventually you started hunting off of mules. Did you like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jumping fences. And well, it, yeah, but it still wasn't as good as road hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a mule didn't have no heater and air conditioner. But that road up, and I took to it real quick. Of course, I was running tar shop then in the 90s, and and them boys from all oh, up around Harmony and Cleveland, up in there, come down here. They're all dead now, too. But they got, and Yale, Stillwater, there's several of those guys got to coming down here hunting and every time it rained. Well, but they had hunted for, old Marion Graham hunted for years, and he didn't average... Well, they just didn't catch very many cats, you know. Mm-hmm. It followed them around. They didn't have dogs that cat. Just followed them around barking. Yeah. And <laughs> so that we well, did you did you rig cats too? I oh mean, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Well, after I got to rodent, the uh, first rig dog I had, me and Daddy was up here in North Town hunting one day, and we'd went in there hunting. And we was coming out, and I had a young dog. He wasn't but a year or so old, but he was wet. We'd caught a lot of cats with him, and I I stopped, and uh, he went to barking in the box, and I had got out. Of the pickup was messing around, and I walked around there, and where I drove in before, there was a cat track in my track. And I got back in, and and Dad said, what's old Speck barking at? And I, I was teasing him. I said, he smells a bobcat. Dad just died laughing and said, yeah, I'm sure he does. And I turned them out, and they went to running. And from then on, he was, uh, he struck quite a few He was a rig cats. dog, yeah. And then once you get one, you know, if you hunt him with the other dogs, then any time the whole bunch will just explode when they smell one. Did you have a rig rack, or did you just let them? Uh, they, I didn't. I couldn't tell any difference. Well, yeah. it was in the box. Now I always had uh, later years from well, not right then, but later years I always had two dogs. I always carried Joe, and I give old Joe to. Uh, Derek, Derek Derek Edwards, and uh, he used him first. He rigged a lot of cats for him. In fact, I hunted with him some, and he rigged some cats for us down there. After I gave him old Joe, was, he went deaf, so he couldn't stay in a race. Because he couldn't move up with the other dogs? No, they'd, they'd pick it up and leave there. Of course, he got a lot of the pickups, and, uh, but we he, we used him. He was a really, he was one of the best rig dogs I've ever seen. Now, I hate to do away with him. He's such a good dog. Yeah. And and uh, Derek didn't have nothing. He needed some dogs, and I told him he could have him for a strike dog. And I used him after he got Dale for a strike dog. But, uh, he he brought some dogs out there that he bought. I guess they were trained dogs. Bought them out of Oregon. Did you ever were you ever around those dogs? No. I don't think they worked out real good for him. I don't think that oh, was a different kind of this, dog. This boy north of us that hunts with the sun, he bought a. Uh, he went up there to Oregon and bought a, a half blue tick, half running dog jip, and uh, brought her out here. Maggie? Well, that, that one year. He was as good of a, a rig dog and as good of a start dog as you could ask for in this country. And after you got the cat jump, she did everything she could to mess you up. Yeah. You, know, you could tell she was a good dog at where she come from, but she would just... Waller that track, and other dogs get ahead of her, and then uh, she she would even try to false tree, you know. But uh, she, you could tell she was a good dog for her country, but she just went back to being a pot licker here, you know. It's <laughs> she is a she. Uh, I kept her here. He never did. I kept. I only. I trained a bunch of dogs with her. Mm-hmm. You know, for striking. Because she'd start a track. Oh, yeah. She was the coldest note. And she's done the right job. Whenever she smelled one, you let her out. She, like I said, she'd smell it and just bark like the devil three or four times. And here she'd go up that road just like a greyhound. And she'd stop and bark a few more times. And here she'd go. Uh, she was a start dog. But when you got the cat jump, you need to get her in the box as soon as you could. Because she just... She's barking off uh, track. And bark behind, bark off track. But old... Uh, keep up. Mainly? Well, Car- uh, Nelson, yeah, what's his name? Well, Curtis called me and wanted to know if, and he uh, he bought her off of him, and he was satisfied with her, but I gave him a pickup load of young dogs that I'd started, 
and he caught several cats. Right, there. he hunted every night though. Right after he bought them, he caught a lot of cats with him. But he, she was an older dog, but and she was anything but a cat dog. She's a little blue tick, short, squatty thing, about as wide as she was long. <laughs> You'd have thought, you know, but she dang sure would start a cat, wouldn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she would. And a lot of times, if you ain't got one of them, and, you know, they do kind of mess the race up, and you think, well, I ain't hunting her, and then and then you go for a week and don't start a cat, you might throw them back in there. <laughs> well, we'll give her another <laughs> chance. up a little bit, but, I mean, they, uh, on them bad losers, if they start babbling, you know, they can mess things up. But, but you, sometimes you can get away with one of them in the pack because the other ones learn to ignore them. When they, don't honor them. Yeah. 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 Uh, but they learn too. Them hounds learn not to honor them. Yeah. Well, Pete, he was real. He was a strange dog. His litter mates were as good as, I, and he was. But now back east, he was. He had babble. If they made a lose, he'd bark. But them dogs, I've seen them. You know him bark, and they'd listen. They wouldn't go to him. They could tell when he had it and what he did. But if you run one of them old cats back east and that brush real, I guarantee you he'd get a lot of them pickups and he'd be right too. Really? The longer he run, the better he got. Huh. But if you run a cat over 30, 40 minutes in that old heavy brush, he is through screwing around. He'd, Don't waste me. Yeah, he, he got out of the business. You know what I said about yeah. old Pete? Yeah. He was, you know, he, he'd sure screw up a race to start with if. He didn't screw it up because the dogs wouldn't pay attention to him. But if he opened and had it, they'd break to him. They could tell the difference. They can tell the difference. That's yeah, the they sure could. Yeah. Those dogs know. Yeah. I, I, I bought a, 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 a trained dog, or a friend of mine was going through a divorce, and I got one of his trained dogs. And, and uh, it was amazing how she could tell if those, after a little while, she'd tell if those dogs of mine were trashing on something or not. You know, they'd open on something. She'd ignore them. She'd ignore them. She'd mm-hmm. ignore them. And then finally they'd be right. And boy, there she'd go to them. She'd yeah. know the difference. They, they know. Yeah. Well, know even, they... even like me and him being around hounds their whole life, you know, I, when I hear them, I can tell whether that dog's got that cat or, or is rubbing, you know, you, you can, you can hear the, just the, their their bark may be a little bit Just more a little intense, subtle different little subtle deal that I, I don't even think about, but I don't think a lot of people can pick that up. I you know I was listening to the course. I you know I didn't have any of those dogs, and I'd never hunted with those dogs before. And and listening to Cody and them how they interpreted what was going on, you know, and I I I mean eventually by about. You know, our third, race, fourth race. Then I could tell. You know, he had one dog named Eve, and she was a little. She was. She didn't open until it was getting hot. You know, until it was about ready. He said, "Oh, there's Eve. They're getting close to that cat. There's, you know, Eve's yeah. opening up." And uh, and and like Stocky, I, I mean, he he, and I never could tell a difference. Where does he live? It, this guy's down in South. Texas. No, the guy you got his dogs. No, that was uh, yeah, that was Cody King. He's down way down South Texas. He's he's I think he's south of San Antonio on the Mexico line. Way down there, Edinburgh, Ellenburg, Ed, yeah. way down toward Edinburgh. We used to have people. Yeah, cotton. They call cool that cotton horse down there through roots. But I know one thing: if you caught them, them cats, if you caught them cats back east like he did, he really got some good dogs. I think I know he does. Yeah, and he's been, you know, he's gone into Mexico. He had one week there where he went into Mexico and he caught, I think he caught three lions and five bobcats. Yeah. So I mean, he he hunts hard. I mean, those guys. Yeah. I'm not used to. I don't hunt at night. You know, we, first place we can't hunt at night. You know where I'm at. It, it's where you uh, southern New Mexico. They won't let you hunt at night? No, sir, unless you're coon hunting down on the river, you can get away with it. But uh, to lion, hunt lions, you got to, yeah, I think it's 30 minutes before daylight, you can put your dogs down. And, and I hunt on a mule. I, what I do is I just take my, I get on a mule and put my dogs on the ground. I ride through the hills. And, uh, but these guys, I, hunting at night like that, I mean, I got tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it messed up my system. Well, you two. You know, or still, when the conditions get right, we got to go, you know. Sure. And it wasn't nothing for him and me back uh, before kids come along and stuff that he, he would uh might be five days, going you know, day and night. <laughs> Sleeping on the side of the road with a 
with a eating potted meat and crackers. I've got some kind of sardines with him. We drive it. I mean, it, we literally leave here with a pack of dogs and not come back for for seventy two to a hundred hours. <laughs> that's that's to, the thing that I've noticed about. All but, successful houndsmen they, that have the best dogs are usually the guys who hunt the hardest. Yeah. Well, they got a, it's a challenge. Yeah, and, you know, there ain't very many people like it. Yeah, and uh, and uh, you know, you just and another thing, you can't just start hardly. You, it's nearly impossible to start. You need somebody, I think, knows what they're doing to kind of. Sure, you know, right. assist you along. Sure. You just go buy a pack of dogs and start, and uh, it don't work very good most of the time. Yeah. Did you? I've, ever... I've known. I don't know how many in my lifetime, but they just—they're not persistent. You know, they'll. Yeah. They—they they think they really like it, but I've had some that just went nuts over it. A year later, they never go again. You know, yeah. it's uh, its its it's just, a, it's like I say, it's very, the most challenge that I think of any th- thing you can run with a, with hounds, that's the most challenge. The to start with, everything out there leaves more scent than mm-hmm. a bobcat. Mm-hmm. You know, a bobcat don't leave no scent. And, uh, you know, there's, there's so much off game that, uh, you know, first thing you gotta do is break them off off game. And I've had people say, boy, I try to keep them away from where them. That's just the opposite of me. You know, if I, my dogs run a coon or a coyote or something off, that's all I do. I don't even try to cat on it again until I spotlight some coons or coyotes and dump them on them. I want them broke. Yes. You know, but you can't keep them away from that stuff. You have know? you ever, have you ruined any, many dogs? I guess you, I've heard guys say that. You, you know, people that ruin dogs overshock them. You don't have to shock a dog. They can't stand that electricity. Yeah. I mean, and uh, I shock them a little. When I start a puppy, I'll tie him out to a barrel or something, you know, as out of the pens out there. And then I'll lead him around a little bit. And then I'll haul him to the grocery store and to the gas station. And I get them to, used to hauling. Then, when they normally about six months old, I'll put a lead on them, like from here to your pickup out there. Long lead. Long lead and I'll say, come here. And I'll pull them to me two or three times and pet them. Mm-hmm. And after two or three times, I'll turn that shot collar up to about one, touch them a time or two. And, of course, they'll try to run off and everything. And I'll pull them to me and pet them. And I'll just keep turning it up. And sometimes I'll go up to number six, boy, and I'll hit them, and they'll just have a screaming just fit. enough to get their attention. And, but the first time they come to me and I pet them, the rest of their life, when I say come here, they come they here. Yep. yep. And, uh, you know, you take them hunting in, they know what you're saying when you say come here. Mm-hmm. And, again, you've got your shot collar on. But I'm going to say by the time I take a dog hunting the first time, he probably won't ever get He'll get toned, mm-hmm. you know, that. Tone, I'll tone them, but that tone them if they've been shocked a few times, I scared them just as bad as shocking them, yeah. and they'll learn, they'll listen to you. Yeah. But I started a lot of them, and a very, very few of them did I ever shock. Uh, now, if they get, if they run off game uh, after the, you know, after I, I'll tone them a time or two, and if that don't work, I'll, I'll turn yeah. them around. But it all starts with you take exposing them, but teaching them to come to you, right. and then exposing them to off game. Yeah, and people will go them. hunting with you and turn some pups loose, and they ain't never been out of the pen. They take them all night to catch them, you know. Oh yeah. And I've had a bunch of that, but when I take my puppy, and I'll rode them a lot before I take them hunting. I'll take them out here in the country to mm-hmm. a wheat field or something, turn them out and rode them and load them, and I get them all to loading. Uh, Real, uh, they learned to handle before they learned to hunt. Uh, yeah, uh, over the years, have you seen a lot, lot of fluctuation in the bobcat population? Oh, yeah. They, they, they were almost gone through that drought. Uh, was a combination of uh, in 2010. Uh, well, it was all over really, but when that drought hit, it was through here in all of Texas. Well, then 2011 and 12. Uh, Hides got high, and all the habitat was gone. Everybody had grazed everything off or built it for hay because there wasn't nothing to eat. And uh, 
and I didn't think they were going to come back. By 2015, you couldn't before it finally started. It finally started raining, and you couldn't find the cat track anywhere. I mean, they were they were just gone. I thought, Hoodie, they won't never bounce back. And by 19, our numbers are back. Really? You know, and not like they were like in the early 2000s. We had a lot more cats. There's enough cats to hunt now. And, yeah. But that's there ain't no cat hunters though. Ain't nobody trapping. Ain't none of these kids. You know, they're not, that's a die. That's died. It's it's over with in the rural area. There is. And, but I mean, you still run cats. Yeah. 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 We've had a pretty bad winter. I ain't caught four or five this winter. But we've, we've been dry up here again. But yeah, I still and still I, the same kind of dogs. Same dogs. Yeah. Same dogs. Same. Some of them he started. I still got old Maggie and. Uh, my pack now, he's been out of it enough. I about about just the ones I've started, but I had two old dogs die last year. He started, but and I've got uh, a dog that come from them Brahmins down there. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. She's a she's not our breeding, I, uh, and she's she's a good dog. Mm-hmm. Her feet aren't quite as tough as as them straight running dogs are running. But she she's a good dog in this country. Well, I tell you, I always liked my breeding because I knew I bred them to do what I wanted them to do. Mm-hmm. But I never was kennel blind. A lot of these people are mm-hmm. kennel. If it's not from their kennel, it's no good. Mm-hmm. And I'll guarantee you, if 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 you had a dog, I thought was not a dog, a breed of dogs. I learned years ago, don't pay attention to an individual. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got an outstanding dog, I don't want to breed to him unless he's got a mama, a daddy, a brother, or a family of mm-hmm. good dogs. If you breed to an individual, you just will not breed, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but I learned years ago, uh, I went, I go by family. Mm-hmm. Uh, not individual. Not it, not that any. bitch he was talking about, I had old Misty is such a good dog. I got a litter mate to her, and she wasn't worth a nickel. I had two litter mates to her after she was so good. I bred her some of the best dogs in the country, and she never did have a pup worth nothing. She wouldn't reproduce nothing. Huh. But she was an outstanding cat dog now. She was a full-blood tree and walker, but she was like a 60 model. She wasn't no, she, yeah. she wasn't no late model. But uh, but them them early models they were a lot of them were kind of like these I was talking about on they were game getters game getters yeah but now they they breed and they want them and show them I was at a show one time a big show they have at Ada Oklahoma dog show every year they have it mm-hmm. and uh, they had a cat hunters convention there and and they had it every year but that's the only year I went to it and uh, that's where I met. Some of these guys from up north and learned there was other cat hunters, but uh, I couldn't sleep that night. I had a moment, and I went down there and they were having a bench show. Mm-hmm. And this boy was from Louisiana, and there was I don't know how many hundred dogs there, but he was telling me that he had a dog in the top ten in the bench show. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was telling me that uh, he said, "Boy, I wish I could win this." He said, "I can get." I don't remember back then, 500 or something, a pop for breeding this dog and said, I'll be backlog from here on. I said, well, he must be a heck of a good dog. Oh, no. I said, he won't he won't run a lick. He won't fight a lick. He's just pretty. <laughs> but said, everybody, I thought, well, boy, I'd like to have a litter of pups out of him. <laughs> you know, he, he said he ain't worth nothing. But tell show, him. he's a show dog. Tell him pretty is as pretty does. But there's a lot of that went on through them years. And, yeah. you know, you got a pretty dog, but... Ain't worth nothing. If if you had to if you had to start all over again, would you do anything different with your dogs? No, I don't probably. I would not in later years. Yeah. But this technology makes it easy. Yeah. You know, it's so easy. The more you can just to shock them a time or two and then tone them when they do something wrong, and it's just it's just they're it's great. Well, our our biggest struggle anymore is just from about October nearly up to the end of January now, you, you just pretty well got to stay out of the deer hunter's way, stay yep. out of everybody's way, you know, and, and, and uh, like these rivers he's talking about going down, nobody cared 
20 years ago, you could walk up and down these rivers, and you couldn't walk a quarter mile without getting a trespassing charge right now. I mean, really? Them deer is horrendous. Yeah. They run to... And people. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of out-of-towners have moved in here and bought this stuff for hunting, and, and uh, they just they don't even understand what running a hound is. Well, they look at their farm like I look like you look at your house. Yeah. You know, uh, and ain't nobody going to step on yeah. your place. There are a lot of them. Now, they're not all that way. There are a lot of... A lot of pretty good people. Yeah, there there's lots of places you can hunt, but you got to be careful that the guy in the next half section that the dogs might get over on. You know, you can't you can't hunt this deal you can hunt because they're probably going to end up over there. So that, that's yeah. the biggest challenge in the doors. Well, I've hunted around here, and I guess I hunted on everybody. I just went wherever. And uh, in the last ten years, I had two. Two. They wasn't nasty. One of them was, but they asked me not to hunt on them. Mm-hmm. They were just, you know, which I don't mind that. They just said don't hunt on me. Sure. And uh, and both of them, one of them was drunk. <laughs> he was a drunkard. And his, neither one of them had ever lived here. Or right, they moved back here and inherited all their folks' property yeah. and everything. Both of them. And, uh, you know, they were... Highly educated uh, guys from that had lived in a big city ever since they got out of high school, yeah. but they they were the only two that ever asked me. And everybody in town, these little towns, made fun of them, yeah, and said yeah. don't pay attention to them. But I just didn't, you know. There's too many places to hunt. I always felt like there's too many places to hunt that they don't care. Why bother somebody that it does I mean, don't want you around them? And, uh, what do you think about the future? I mean, do you think Oh, I wouldn't try to like wolf coyote dogs. I used to run them greyhounds. I wouldn't even think about running greyhounds again. Really? Cause of... Oh yeah, they're just this old land's changed so much. It's just. Did Did you ever know Norman Davis? Down in South Texas, Norman Davis. I don't believe. Seems like Norman Davis. Seems like I've heard that name. No, I don't guess I know. And uh, Boo Kemp. Oh, yeah, I know Boo Camp. Yeah, yeah, he come up here and hunted with me at James College once. Yeah, I'm going to try to go down and talk to him sometime. He's 90-something years old. Yeah. He's still hunting. They say Norman Davis hunted. He was 90, 90-something until he he hunted until two years before he passed away. Well. And he quit. One of the things I think he, speaking of the wolf dogs, he, he, ran, he, he ran bobcats and coyotes with his dogs. Yeah. And uh, he quit, had to quit because he couldn't. The, because of the property owners and everything, there wasn't enough room to run those wolf dogs. Yeah, yeah. There used to be a lot of coyote hunters here, and they're, they're, they went several highways. Yeah. They couldn't run them cold highway. Dogs getting run over. Yeah. I've heard of deer. You know, them wolf hunters, they never would really break their dogs either. And when these deer got here, you know, because a coyote was really about coyotes and bobcats, about the only thing here to run, so they didn't have to, but... Uh, when them deer got here, I heard them guys say they'd end up thirty miles over. Yeah. You know. uh, yeah, they couldn't run. They couldn't cow not them deer. Would, they'd leave. They'd them old buck deer would leave. Take them to another state. <laughs> they'd hit one of them rivers and leave her. But them, uh, them deer really messed this country up. Is there anything else you want to add to it? I mean, if you, yeah. I don't guess. I've told. <laughs> Have you ever been scared or hurt out there while you were hunting all night by yourself? Or? No, I never did. I had a friend that scared to death one time. His dogs had a cat run down. And they were catching it and crossed the road and went in another place, and he jumped out and went out there. And he said, I, and that's when hides was high. He just wanted to get that hide. So said, all of a sudden, his dogs went to up and come to him as hard as they could and gathered around him. And he said he could something coming to him through the brush scared him to death. And he went to running trying to beat him back to the road. And he said I didn't beat him. Two two donkeys <laughs> was after his dog. And he said they run him off that cat and run me back to the road. But he just knew as a bear or something. He don't want us after him. Yeah. But it was a, two of them donkeys. You have rattlesnakes up here? Yes. Yeah. That year I caught them 60 something cats. Old Butch kept up. He rode every one of them down. And I had five dogs bit that. Really? That, in that four four months, or I hunted this about every night. And I had a lot of, there's a lot of irrigated cotton. And they had a bunch of irrigated, and of course that year it rained so much, it's, it's all 
you know, chest high. But them cotton, them irrigated cotton patches, the best races you can ever have. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they so in the fall, fall of the year here. They'll generally last anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, and I mean they're good. Mr. Curtis used to sit on the tailgate out here. I remember him so well. He'd sling his legs and he'd say, I've hunted 65 years or 70 years or whatever. And he said, they don't get no better than this. It's the oh, best okay. I've ever seen. Old, old Bill, he was... Hey, did you ever? I think I asked you, but I, I can't remember. You ever go out west and hunt lions or bears? Or well, I went with a boy from Amarillo a few times, Ted Lee Master, but we never did. He didn't have dogs very good at that time. Yeah, and I didn't care for it. You did? Uh, yeah, you know, I just didn't care. I didn't like the country much. I didn't like the. And they tell me, I got a, a guy that hunted with me here, and he went to Idaho with with. Some old pot liquors that were coon dogs deluxe, but they every time you jumped a cat, the first tree they come to, they'd sit down and go to tree. And, but he caught a lot of he caught sixteen line there in Idaho, really? and took, which is them two dogs. But he told me he said an Oklahoma possum run harder than an Idaho mountain lion. <laughs> he said when them lions hear a a dog bark, they go up a tree. They go up. And he said they're in Idaho, but he had them on film, you know. Was he hunting snow though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snow and and, uh, but he treated a bunch of lion. He rigged them mostly driving really? them roads. Obviously. And he'd look for vulture or for kills. Yeah, ravens. Yeah. Yep. Said you see him, or said you can bet there's a kill there. One, I know one of them. He took a bunch of pictures of two big old lions, and he he had he didn't kill. I don't think he killed any of them, Marty, but he treated them. Yeah, I had pictures of them, but I never did care much for for lion hunting. Uh, I just, but, but I enjoyed seeing the country. And one time I had them leave me at camp. We was at a, I don't remember where we was at, New Mexico, Santa Fe maybe. Santa Fe, up above Santa Fe, yeah. Yeah, way well, up no Anyway, I told them just leave me at camp, and I took and, and I took two dogs. And, and I would never take my dogs out there. I always went from there, and he had to pick up a load of hounds. I left, had him leave two of his old, and I did wind up a draw there one day, and they got to bellering around them uh, dogs, and and uh, I seen two kittens in a tree, huh? two bobcat kittens yeah. in a tree, and uh, I didn't kick them out or show them to them or nothing. But uh, And then uh, one time, they, they went to run, and on top of a mountain, we was down below it, and they come down at wide open, and right in front of us, they shut up, and a little cat weigh about eight or ten pounds, a little bit, and climbed a tree. He had an old boy with us from, uh, I think he was from Tulsa, and had a high-powered roping mule, and he had a, he had a, oh, a great big old pistol, mag, magnum pistol of some kind. He shot two boxes of shells up there, and he never did hit that cat. I was hoping he would, <laughs> little old kitten. But he shot and shot and shot. He was wanting that cat. But uh, that's about the only game I seen while I was out there. Other than a wolf, uh, we was hunting one day, and this Ted Lee man we was in two pickups. He hollered and said, there's a wolf. And I didn't get to see it, really. I seen it move, kind of. Mm-hmm. But the guy with me looked. He said, yeah, he's standing up there. And I didn't. I just glanced, and I seen it something. Moved down the hill. They said it was a wolf. Mm-hmm. But I didn't see much game when I was out there yeah. in northern New Mexico. Yeah, it's, I mean, I get it depending on where you go. I've never hunted northern New Mexico myself. I'm, a, I'm way down south in the desert. Yeah, that that stuff you do that dry land line hunting that's a challenge. It's well, a, I don't care. Uh, my opinion is if I'm going somewhere strange country, you need a local yeah. that knows the country and knows you can't do no good. I never was able yeah. to go. It's hard. I, well, where I'm at, <clears throat> of course, I don't, I don't, I don't travel. I should. I need to go to better country. But you know, there's there's some lines that cut through that country and they stay a little bit and and. Every time I get in the truck to drive somewhere else, I think, well, maybe, you know, that Tom might have came through here. So I, I go across the river, and I, I enjoy riding my mule, and I, I like to – I kind of like to do it the traditional way. You know, I put the dogs on the ground right through the country, right. and that's not the only way I hunt. The way we did it up to – we couldn't. Until you couldn't? Yeah. How about mules? Do you, do you have you some good mules? Yeah. Do you have some bad mules, too? No, I had some good mules, real good mules. They jumping little dudes, and uh, – 
an old friend of mine, I was up here one time, one of the last meals I had. I was up here to Eric one time, and a friend of mine had two, had four ten foot panels stood up, and I walked out of his house to my pickup, and there was a blanket. I mean, he was an alp, had the spotted hips, big mule there. I seen him, and I thought, boy, that's a good looking mule. I said, that's it. Oh, he said, don't even talk to him about that mule. I said, that little five year old grandson of mine rides him all over the place. I said, I wouldn't tell him for tall. I said, that little old Jason said he'd have a fit. So I come on home a little bit while he called me. He was a dog trader. <laughs> he said, Hootie, I got to have some money. He said, I got to get some money in the bank in the morning. He said, what did you give for that mule? I said, that bridle, that saddle, and that blanket laying there by that pen and that mule. I said, I'll give $300 for it. He said, well, boy, that's not much. And he said, don't try to get up here when Jason's not here. I hate to see you load him. <laughs> and so he said, go by the grocery store in the morning. I won't be here. And said, give Sandy, his wife. He said, give her the money. So I went and give Sandy the money. And I go out there, and I couldn't load that mule. Couldn't catch him in that 10 by 10. He tried to kick me. <laughs> Finally, I backed up there the trailer and run him up in the trailer. And that little boy was standing there on the porch watching all this. So Jason, he, I got him loaded. I walked by and kind of touched him on the hip. He kicked us out of that trailer. That old Jason come walking out there, and he said, what are you going to do with that mule? And I said, I'm going to ride him. He said, I bet you you don't. said, every cowboy and Eric's tried him. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I brought him home. And he made a good mule, but he got to where after a year or so, he got to where he'd just be walking along. And you might ride him all night and all day. And said, all of a sudden, he just drop his shoulders and run backwards just as hard as he could and just leave you laying there in the grass burrs. And uh, he did it several. And the last time he did it, well, I took him back up there. And I told Leon, I said, I'd like to have my money back, but I, won't, I don't want him back. I said, if you can't get me $5 for it. But he called me. He got me my money back the next day. But that was an honorist one I ever had. But I had a good friend old. Dennis Ray always kept a real slick older model pickup. He come down and hunted with me one weekend, had a little old tan, really a nice pickup. And next weekend he come in again, and the windshield was broke. The hood was crashed, everything. And he had a little old mule he jumped in the back. Well, he said that mule wouldn't get in, so he'd have to whoop him until he jumped in there. And he said, the Humane Society, if everybody seen me, is going to get me. So he said, I went and got me a hot shot. And I asked him, I said, what happened to that pickup? And he said, I don't know. And then he went to tell me about it. And he said, I snubbed him up where he had to jump in. And said, I hit him fat hot shot. And said, when I blinked, he said, I blinked mine. And said, I don't know what happened. He said, when they were open again, he said, he's in front of the pickup. And he'd run my hood. My... <laughs> but he said, I blinked. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. I was... We was hunting over the river one day hunting, and there's a beaver dragging a limb. And them two the females of his run up there and went fighting that beaver, and he's just having a fit. said, we got to get them off of him. I said, the beaver's helpless out of water. He said, helpless out of water? said, they bite trees in two hours. <laughs> but, oh, did it. We all did a lot. He's, he has a lot of fun. That's good. Okay. Well, you guys got anything else? Yeah, I don't know. You kind of think of a few old stories you could tell of uh, a few of the crazier ones, I guess. What what what's the most you caught in one day? I remember several times. I remember. I caught three, and one time I met you over at Gould, and you had a cat race going, you caught a cat, and you'd been hunting all night, and you went home, I took the dogs, and I caught three more that day, four four grown cats, you know. Talking about Finney Clay, mm-hmm. uh, he was here one time, and he was old, he was 80-something years old, and me and him hunted all day, and... Uh, no, we hunted all night, and we went out there to put the dogs up, and he drove up a little after daylight, <coughs> and I, he said, I'm going to take the dogs and go hunting a while. Finney said, well, if you don't care, I believe I'll go with you, and I was 
you know, I was give out. I come on home and went to bed. Well, him and Finney, and we had caught a cat or two, and him and Finney went and caught one or two. And late that evening, I went out there to tend to what dogs are still there, and they drove in from hunting. And I was teasing, you know, because Finney had hunted all night with me all day with him. And uh, he said, what are you doing? I didn't tell him I was feeding the dogs. I said, oh, I'm fixing to go hunting a while. And he said, well, good deal. I said, I believe I'll go with you a while. I didn't go, <laughs> but that was Finney Clay. He yeah, hunted that hard. I guarantee you, he'd hunt straight. He was hunting this man I ever seen in my oh, life. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a date that night. I was 17 years old, and we caught three that day. Yeah. And I felt pretty accomplished. I was going to go home and go out and uh, he couldn't believe I wasn't gonna keep hunting. <laughs> the conditions that it just blowed his. Now, are you gonna? Why are you gonna stop now? Yeah, <laughs> boy, he gave me a talking to one time. We turned the corner and there's a cat in the road, and he was stalking something, you know, in a hot pavement. And, I, and we had turned out before on the one we'd seen earlier that morning. They couldn't smell no dry, windy day. <laughs> You just had to see it to believe it. I just, for meanness, I just looked at that cat. I just drove on around him. Of course, he ran off there and barred this and old Finney said, what are you doing? I said, well, they can't smell nothing. And he grabbed me and shook me. He said, you turn this pickup around. I said, we're out here cat hunting. You see a bum cat and won't turn out on him. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> But I, I dealt him, boy, I dealt him trouble. He, I teased him a lot, and that was a new world to him. He was always pretty. You know, yeah, he was. He was yes sir, no sir, pretty cut and dry. Yeah. South Texas gentleman's what it, kind of how he was yeah. raised. But, but me and him both went down there and stayed a summer with him in Florida. He had a camp in Florida, oh, yeah. and we we cat hunted there and, and uh. uh they they won't tree there either, you know. Yeah. They, uh, swampy down there too. Oh it? yeah, swampy cottonmouths, alligators. It's a uh, whole yeah. nine yards, but uh, we caught several cats and we was down there. Yeah, yeah, we I did too, and I was there with him. But every one he jumped, really. Yeah. It, yeah, we get, caught. I guess about all of them we jumped too. But it it was a lot like that stuff over east for you hunted. But I was young. I was it was between my junior and senior year, and I. And I would, I was gonna get every one of them cats, you know. I wanted to look at them, just yeah. and uh, they'd bay them out there in them briars. Finney just had to sit there and wait till the fight was over, you know. Huh? Yeah. What? Well, I'd go out there and I remember them cats would be seventy-five yards in there, maybe, and it'd take me an hour of crawling on my hands and knees and going around wading through alligators. And that would be good. It uh. Looking back now, I, I shouldn't have been <laughs> caught in mouths everywhere. Yeah, I imagine. It was a different country. He had average losing about a dog a year down there to gators. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We lost one. When I went down there, he had lost one the week before. He hired some boys to go in there and get her collar off. Huh. But, uh, but I didn't I didn't like it down there much. How, get too hot. Here in the summer, though, right here. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll we'll burn up usually. How late in the year can you hunt? Well, as long as the nights are getting down to you know seventy five degrees or less, and you got moisture, you can go. But uh, here, late summer and August and stuff, we'll get our, our nights won't even cool off. You know, yeah. it'll be eighty five degrees. Well, of mm-hmm. course, growing up, we had in the last few years, but you only get some big rains. Mm-hmm. Used to, you know, in the summertime, if you're like in the summer, I don't care, June, July, or August, let the cloud come up and become a big rain. Why? Yeah. But back then, hell, you just went across the road mm-hmm. and drive that shinry, you know, and you could see where one had been in the road there, or this road to dogs, and they'd find one. But, but it's not, of course, one thing, you got to drive 50 miles now to hunt. Yeah. You can't hunt anywhere around here. And even that country I hunted for all them years, it's filling up people too over there around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I hunt a lot of public ground anymore, and it, it's about half seasonal. You you sure got to – you can't go in there during hunting seasons, just too many people. But, but there's still some hunting around. Uh, uh, there's a boy up at Eric, got got a lot of ground that hunts with us, and he's – Hootie hunted with him a lot. Brian Austin, you yeah. may have heard that name. He he, yeah, he comes Brian. out – he goes out to New Mexico and catches all bear and lion. Does he? He'd been hunting a long time, never had a tree to cat. It come rain – Years, a few years ago, and I went up there. He wanted to hunt with me, and, and they treat a kitten. 
I probably weighed, I don't know, that little old kitten. And he was most excited. He was jumping up and down and carrying on. He said, I've been trying to treat one of them for years. Look at here. Well, he grabbed his 22, and I said, uh, and we was on his land and everything. I said, Brian, I wouldn't shoot that little old kitten. Yeah, he said, it may be a year. He said, I may not ever see another one. I said, yeah, we'll treat another one. It had rained. It's wet. I said, we will catch another one tonight. Are you sure? And I said, yeah. And he aimed a little bit, and he said, are you sure? I said, don't shoot that little kitten. He said, I don't want to have him stuffed. I said, well, get one big enough to stuff. So I talked him out of it. He finally kicked it out. Well, they run it around there. It wasn't dark. They, late in the evening, they run him. And we seen him go up a tree, but the dogs didn't tree him. So I called him in. I said, just leave him here while he gets big. About an hour later, it's in that book I'm talking. Well, he weighed 30, what, 32 pounds, 36. I believe. 36. Great big old tomcat. And we was treating him about an hour later. And I said, now, you can shoot that now. <laughs> and and he shot him, and he come out of the tree and run off. You know, but he, he run about like from here out there. And the dog just turned around and come back. Of course, they won't chew on one or nothing. I don't know why, but they won't. But anyway, they would run out there, and then they come back, and he just had a fit. So he got away. I said, he didn't die away. I said, he's dead there, or them dogs wouldn't have come back. Well, he went out there and found him. Took a whole roll of film up. He was, oh, he was proud of that cat. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the first cat he caught. He's caught several since then. Oh, yeah, yeah. he caught a bunch after that. I just left my dogs up there. I had old Gator and Joe, and I don't remember Bill. I had a bunch of good dogs, and uh, I just left him up there with him. He, he had all that land up there, and when I went hunting, and Greg was up there, and when I went, I'd just go up there and get my dogs and go hunting up there. The last several years, I hunted a lot with him. I remember telling him, I said, that 36-pound cat, I said, you might not ever catch one again the rest of your life. And I don't think he believed me, but he didn't even come close to that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there, that's an I mean, anomaly. Uh, yeah. Just a, uh, as big as they get. Yeah, you know. that's big. Daddy, I don't think he ever caught one that weighed over 31 or 2. But when I was young, I did take a lot of 40-pounders to the pickup. But when you put them on the scales, <laughs> they sure it wasn't know. there. It just wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Felt like you're 40 pounds and you was dragging them out, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what, a third, 28, uh, 26, 28, 30 pounds, they're big. Yeah. They're so long and lanky and they're just big. Big cat. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was talking about that deer we all are hunting uh, there a few years ago. Um, I was walking around an old beaver slough up here, and I seen an ear sticking out on the ground. And I looked, and it took me a second to make it out, and there was a about a 110-pound button buck uh, buried mm-hmm. with just its ear sticking out. And, a, and I thought, well, I got this a line. It's got to be, you know. And I... I Peeled that brush back, and the fang marks on the snake had bit it, biting it on the underside. And they wasn't but about that wide, and I thought, ah, oh. I, I still think maybe it's a lion, but I knew it was probably a bobcat. And I put a camera up, and an hour after I left, a big old tomcat come in there, and I come back with the dogs and caught him. And uh, he weighed 34, and he was had a lot of deer meat in him, you know, he'd been eating on that deer. Mm, he was cool. a 29, 30-pound cat, took down that 110-pound mm-hmm. buck, you know. I mean, people don't I think I think quite a few over there. Uh, in my, all the years, I did Russell, all that Henry, them old Sandy Roads were. But you find where they kill one, and I'll guarantee you, they've been some ground tore up. You yeah. see, now they the oh, deer, they just tore the ground up, fought as big as this house in the road. Just you know, it don't they don't just kill him like yeah. a lion. It takes them a while. They have to. They got to choke that wind. Yeah, exactly. Out. They don't break. Yeah. They can't just penetrate that neck and break that, that backbone. Yeah. But, but they're they're amazing predators more than what people think. You know? Yeah, they're killing machines, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they there's something else they got. Down there in South Texas, Cody has showed me some pictures and stuff of where the cats kill those those white-tailed deer all the time down there. Yeah. You know, the bobcats. And and they're not very big cats down there, it don't seem like. No. Uh, Jay Martin Basinger down here, he used to hunt some. He said twice he got called on a calves killed and buried. They thought it was lions, and he caught a big bobcat both times. Basinger. Yeah. Remember him I've heard that name before. 
fees. Any of the night or taxis, and uh, I went in there and hunted with him once. He come up here a lot and hunted with me. He's the only guy I ever priced a dog to. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Jay Bysinger. He Did came you get it sold? Huh? Did you sell it? No. <laughs> well, he kept telling me he's going to buy old, right? was it Ranger? Really, Poncho. Poncho. Yeah, he come up here and hunt with me, and, and old Poncho was one of the best dogs I ever owned. He would rig, and he would run, and he would he was just a good dog. He come up here and hunt with me several times. And he said, I'm going to buy old Poncho. I said, no, I don't sell dogs, and you ain't going to buy him. He said, yeah, I am. And I said, no, uh, I need him, and you ain't going to buy him. So finally he kept saying, well, would you price him? I said, yeah, I will. I said, I'll take 7500 for him. Oh, he said, I can't give that. And I said, no, you can't. That's the reason I asked that for him. I don't want to sell him. Well, he got home and he called me. He said, would you come down any on that dog? I said, not a penny. I don't want to sell him, but if you want him, you'll give 7500 for him. So he called me back later and he said, will you put a guarantee on that dog? I said, I sure will. And he said, well, what kind of guarantee would you give me? And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. You keep him as long as you want to. If he ever doesn't suit you, bring him back, and I'll give you $250 for him. Why? He said, I can't take a guarantee like that. And I said, I know you can't, but that's the only one you're going to get. Because I don't know what you're going to do with him, what dogs you're going to put him with or whatever, but that's the guarantee on the dog. If he doesn't suit you. And he said, well, I can't do that. Didn't hear from him anymore. But he was, uh, but you know, that's truth. You know, I say you a dog and I don't know what you're going to do with that dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I never, you can ruin a good cat. If you, you know, you take, you take one of these really good young dogs and, and sell them guys or seem like they go out there and put them on the barren line. You know, they get used to overrunning the track. And I don't know. It, it, well, people are different. I have a good friend. I hunted with him for years and years, and I'm not going to say who he is. Barrett, he knows. Everybody knows him knows. I give him the best bunch of dogs I ever owned. They're a bull pack or two or three at a time or whatever. A year's time, they wasn't worth nothing. Really? I don't know how in the world... He messed the dog up like he did, but he just messed them up. Did he? Did he hunt them with other dogs that weren't any good? He didn't make any difference. He just he just take He didn't make a mind for one thing. Yeah. And uh, we used to hunt, and he had a, he, you know, they wouldn't load all my dogs. Whenever you honk that horn, you don't have to holler. Just toot that horn and go back there and open the tailgate, and they load it. Yeah. But. A year, six, eight months, something, he'd have one or two come by the truck, and he'd holler and tell them to load, and he had collars on them. Yeah. And I'd tell him, I'd shock that dog and make him get into all oh, they get in that minute. I don't want to. You yeah. know, he just he just wouldn't he just wouldn't make a mind. The longer they stay. And they learned that yeah. pretty quick, too. The worse they get, and pretty soon they're the doing same way they're running trash. They'd run trash. I'd tell him, you know, you need shock. Well, he might be after Bob. Ben was hunting one time, and... <clears throat> James Collins, and we just started hunting down there, and they just, and I had a, a young chip and her mom, old Sue, Susie, or whatever. Anyway, we come to a creek, and his dog just, I mean, lit up, and here they went. And the old chip I had, it wasn't Susie, but anyway, Lou turned around, and she come to the truck, and I loaded her, and my pup was in that race. Her pup, it was a year or so old, and I went shocking. He just had a fit. I said, they was running a bobcat. I said, they was not running a bobcat. If they was, they're going to have to jump one that old Lou will run. If they, if they jump a cat and she won't run it, they're going to get shocked. <laughs> My dogs. Well, they run, and, and they finally treed. And he said, I'm going to go down there and look at that bobcat. And, that, well, they got up close to the truck running, and he said, put old Lou back in there. Well, I put her out, and she went to him, and then she come back. I said, Marion said, they're running the fox. No, they're running the ball. He just uh, so he goes out there, and sure enough, they had a had a fox treat. But you know, that's another thing. If you've got a check dog, you've got to listen to him. You got to yeah. pay attention to him. If you don't pay attention to him, why have one? You know? Exactly. But he wasn't about to shuck his dogs. And, Did you, you? So you have foxes? You never run foxes? No, we didn't have none here. Oh, you didn't have any. That always back east. We went, yeah. I went back east hunting. I'd break them. Old Joe, all my dogs was broke, but he was the worst one. Old Joe, the dog I gave 
Derek that went deaf, he yeah. was hard to break off them fox. Yeah, that's what we have trouble with is foxes. I caught, I treated one the other day, yeah. and I, but I, I still. I'm going to say from what to hunters, I, I'm going to say that if they had fox and cat here, I probably would hunt both. Yeah. I had a guy tell me I ought to go out at night. Of course, we're not supposed to do it. He said, you ought to go at night and call foxes in and let your dogs run them, train your dogs on foxes. But then, you know, you talk to any of those old-time lion hunters, they say there's no way. You cannot let your dogs run foxes. Mm -hmm. And they'll also say you you got to break them off bobcats. He said, because, you know, like you were talking about the boulders and everything, I mean, you'll spend so much time messing with a bobcat, you'll never get to the lion track. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's a sign. Well, that's the way of here of coons. Yeah. You know, back when I was a kid, we hung them, and Daddy had them old blue ticks in the 50s. Uh, we went coon hunting every night. I mean, mm-hmm. them old blue ticks. But you had to go to the mountain. If You you had to go to these mountains. If you was going to coon hunt, these draws and creeks, and they wasn't no coons on them. Mm-hmm. And then in the 70s, you'd see a coon track occasionally on the rivers and the creeks and whatever. You. And then... By the late eighties, you couldn't bob you couldn't bobcat hunt anywhere for the coon. Yeah, uh, you know an old coon leaves a lot of scent. Them mm-hmm. old dogs are cold trailing old coon all day, just about and bolting and barking and messing with them. And uh, that's when I decided to. In fact, I was down at Tipton and I jumped a cat and they run him a long time. Big old cat too, his big old footed track, and they. Went to fight. Well, I broke out there to them, and I got there, and they'd pulled, they'd made a lose and pulled a big old coon out of a brush pile. <laughs> well, I got him off and got to sick of them around. They went to trailing, and they jumped him again, and uh, caught him. And I got to them. They'd found another big old coon in the brush there, and I got them off and got them after him again, and they caught him again right there at the bridge where they'd started. They'd went two or three miles south and then back all the way back and right there at the bridge they caught another one and uh that is it i mean i said i'm breaking them off coon now i'm breaking them off coon and uh and about that time there was a big old cat across the road right in front of me and i turned dumped the dogs on him and they went out there about a hundred yards and treat him. I mean, and I got a turn. They had a little old coon, a little old kitten coon, about ten inches long, a little old kitten coon. And that happened. And then, that, and I said, "That's it. If I can't break them off coons, I'll just quit hunting." Yeah, we got a lot, lot of coons. You know, yeah. it's 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 unreal how many there are. You can't. How many was it they had that hunt the other day? They had a picture of them. On... I never heard. They had some kind of coon killing company. I think it was at Eric, wasn't it? Or I don't know. I seen it on there. They ah, they kill. They had coon dogs and traps and calls. I don't remember what all. But they, I find, I'm pretty sure it's fifty something. Yeah. That they had laid out there. That did. Yeah, they say that they're hard on the turkeys and all that stuff. Well, they eat eggs. Nobody. Nobody hunts anymore. This country used to be full of coon hunters. You know? Yeah. Well, it used to ever ever little old community, uh, ever little old school, and they have at least one or two little boys in in junior high or or great uh, that have coon dogs. Yeah. Ain't none of them. They all got a cell phone now, but they ain't got no dogs. Yeah. It's a it's it's a thing. Rural America is a thing. I read I heard the other morning on the news one percent. Of the United States, the population is rural, and with all the people on their east and west and south coast, I imagine that's probably right. But they say one yeah. percent, and then that the big cities and the higher population areas are making rules for us to live by. Yeah, yeah and they're moving here. Yeah, a lot of them moving here. They've all moved. It's you know all that country I used to hunt back there, and on the river, it's all changed hands and. Well, they're flooding in Texas. I mean, they are. They're, they're what? They're flooding all those, Texas. All those prunies yeah. from California are yeah. going into Texas. Yeah. Well, there's a the high majority of them are good people, but there's always going to be oh yeah that percentage is there whether you're in. Well, I I think the biggest complaint a lot of people have is they have their ways of doing things and they're you know and they're used to that and then they and. 
they get tired of what's going on in their state, so they move to another state. But they bring a lot of that stuff with them and try to they change things. They vote the same. Yeah, that's exactly. what they're and it's, talking about in Texas. He says all these people from California and New York City moved there and said now they're voting the same. They're going to ruin if they're not careful. They'll ruin it too. Yeah. They're fleeing what they. They're fleeing to, to create the same thing where they're Somewhere going. Else, yeah. I don't know. It's a. It's so I don't even recognize the world I was raised in anymore. I bet not. I bet not. It's just changed so much. It's unreal. Well, guys, anything else? Oh, appreciate it. Oh, no, I feel... I'm, uh, when it comes to cat hunting, I don't ever get tired of talking. <laughs> Mr. Shaw, I've, I've, I mean, I've heard a lot about you over the years. I'm talking to, you know... Uh, What's Joel Garnett? I think is the one who told me. Of course, Joel was friends with Clyde Lawson. Yeah, he's that judge. Yeah, from, from Tucson, Carry. He's a good guy. Yes, yes. Yeah, and he calls me every so often. We'll talk for an hour and a half. And I always heard about your dogs and your training and and everything. And I got and when uh, uh, Greg got a hold of Cody. And they asked about coming and talking to you. I said, man, I, you know, I'd be honored to to be able to sit down and listen to you. And oh, Joel, he's a good guy. He's a, yeah, I talk to him often. He go, he still goes down there once in a while. And I've, so. I've told him the last time I talked, he tries to get me to meet him down there, but I'm scared to go off anywhere. Shit, I'm afraid I'll get sick. You know, I, I mean, I'm in pretty decent health, but I can't walk. My yeah. damn legs and knees and ankles. The only thing that still works is my mouth. <laughs> Everything else quit me. And it gets me a lot of fun. I'm afraid, I'm afraid my mouth works too good. <laughs> but, uh, and my wife, her mouth works better than mine. <laughs> Especially when you do something wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, I've had a good life. I tell you what, I sure met a lot of good people and had a lot of good times, a lot of laughs. We had to. Everybody I hunted with nearly was, they had a good sense of humor and had a lot of, through the, had a good time. And all that through the hounds, through the hounds yeah. and hunting. You and I did hunting. learn one thing, too, for sure. Don't ever brag on a hound till he's dead. <laughs> and, you know. Yes, sir. Because if you don't, if you, if you, if he's not dead, he'll make a liar out of you every time. Not once in a while, every time. <laughs> no uh, yeah. Don't ever brag on them till they're dead. That ain't no joke. Well, that's probably a good place to end that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.